everybody or welcome back to episode seven of the Country Chats podcast and I'm delighted here to have Miss Sabrina Fallon in front of me not technically in front of me of course just to, to con- confirm that again she's in Galway and I'm in Mayo um, but Sabrina it's lovely to have you on the podcast. Thanks Sandra it's lovely to, to take part in this thanks a million lovely to meet you. No problem. I tend to go uh, fairly heavy on the females. It's a female heavy show, but sure, that's not a bad thing. I think it's great to have the females involved more than the more than the gentlemen. Oh, that's great to see, Sandra. It's great to see actually females supporting other females. That's it's really great. So thanks very much. No problem. Well, as I've said on other episodes, um, I mean, one of the reasons for doing the podcast is to give singers like yourselves more of an outlet, especially at the moment when the outlet options are, are in short supply. So it's nice to give you another way of, of promoting yourselves and having the chats and, and uh, just getting back into some sort of uh, chats about the country music scene. Yeah, for sure. There's no better. I love an old chat, Sandra, so it's great to... <laughs> Yeah, That's yeah, why and um, we've never actually met. I mean, I would have seen you perform at different concerts here, there, and everywhere, but I've never actually met you. So um, this is our first introduction. Yeah, yeah, I haven't met you either, Sandra. So guys, everything is through uh, uh, a phone now or a computer. The, the way you meet people, like, but it's still you can still have the connection for sure. So it's great. So it's, we've never met. I'm sure we're here having the chats. I'm sure it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so you were there in County Galway, am I right? I am. Yeah, I'm in Ornmore. I'm I'm living in Ornmore, um, but I'm from Pertumna. Yeah, so I live in Ornmore. So not too far away. Nope, it's only about forty minutes, and I used to live in San Francisco, so it, I'm definitely closer now to, oh, to very Ornmore. Oh, good. How long is that since you lived in San Francisco? Uh, I moved out there in when I was, geez, I was twenty something. Uh, yeah, and I lived there for several years. Yeah, I got married out there and had my daughter out there and. Uh, lived a life out there yeah and returned home then in 2006 actually yeah about 2006 came back home were you I mean was the was there a country music scene out there or were you was what was out there in terms of there wasn't there, there wasn't at all actually no there wasn't it was it was it's very difficult to find any kind of music scene out there that would that would uh have been yeah no it was um I actually it's funny because I years ago I I did hotel management in college back when I was 19 and um I worked in a hotel for years here in Ireland and then I went to San Francisco because I had an aunt living there and I didn't really know anything about San Francisco and I just said I'd go for a couple of weeks and I ended up staying years but I did um I was managing a restaurant and bar out there um an Irish one yeah so that's what I was doing but I, I wasn't involved in the music at all out there actually it was that's that's what I did for years yeah good okay like that's something that I wouldn't have known and I mean I suppose a lot of your listeners wouldn't know that either maybe about you um that's very interesting and were you into the singing (laughs) were you into the singing before you went over to San Fran or was it kind of after when you came back to Ireland um well I suppose I grew up you know with with a very musical family all my brothers and you know are have played the bands and um, my dad grew up you know music everywhere in every room you know so it would have been heavily influenced um and I just kind of I would have definitely got up and sang and I played the accord well I play the accord and I play a few tunes and now I, I'm no expert but um there would have been I would have been surrounded by music um and I would have got up and sang with dad or sang with you know different on my party piece but I never went about it until I returned home from San Francisco um it was actually it's funny because I know there's a few different curveballs really that brought me to where i I did decide to to really try and push it because I just had to ask myself, what do I really know? What do I? Um, because so, sometimes I think you can get you can get into the groove where you're just doing something for for this for the sake of it because you've done it for a couple of years, if you know what I mean. So, um, my little my daughter's my husband died when she was four, so that kind of made me stop and have a have a look at what I really want to do, um, and what I was too scared to do, probably, you know. And so then. I just said, you know what, I'm going to apply for a glow chair. I was over in San Francisco at the time and um, I said, I'm going to apply. I love singing. Um, I would have sang, I would have bust for years. I was a busker because I, I went back to college also when um, my husband died and I got a, I ended up getting a master's in arts. I have that as well. Um, but I would have bust my way through college. That's how I paid for college. I would go down to Shop Street every, every weekend and I'd put my little red speaker out, my microphone, and I'd be mortified because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> country music in the city then you know it country music is like marmite you know it's kind of there's some people love it and then some people are like oh my god but I think I was the only country busker down along shop street and I I used to get the goosebumps and I loved 
I loved it. I really did. I have to say it was some of my best days were out busking like the Freedom Minute. And um, and then I was over and back to San Francisco at that stage. We were spending, you know, a couple of months um, in San Francisco and a couple of months in Ireland. And I had to make the decision which world I was going to, to settle in. So I applied for Glochira. Um, Willie called me out in San Francisco. I didn't even call Mike um, because I didn't want to be, you know, putting him in a position where I felt he had to pick me, you know. And Willie just goes, come on, we're taking you on. So I flew back. And I didn't return to San Francisco since, and I just uh, took the plunge and went, went, uh, went all in. Like, yeah, so that's that's some story. Like, I mean, the, I mean, obviously ups and downs along the way, and um, yeah, like, yeah, you probably have to stand back and say, well, what do I want? What do I want to do? And wow, that's that's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, geez, I don't know. Well, I think sometimes you kind of have to take a take a risk. Yeah, take a risk. You know, because if I if I listened to fifty percent of my head, which was don't bother, you, you won't get it, you won't make, or, you know, that kind of way. And then I was out of Glowchera very quickly. I mean, I didn't, I lasted a couple of, not very long in Glowchera. And I remember when I was voted out thinking, you know, because I wasn't used to the the cameras or anything. And I remember thinking, oh my God, you're never going to sing again, you know, but the 50% again. And then the other 50% was like, just because you've been voted out doesn't mean that you can't sing Serena. So I got up the next day and I went out busking again. <laughs> you know, busking got me through for a few years, I'll tell you. So, yeah. Brilliant though, but the busking would have given you so much experience as well, like of just of playing in front of anyone and nobody and a big gang and a small gang and it did, it did. I have a bit of a free spirit, so there's great freedom in it. You know, there's nobody going to come up and say your drive is too slow or <laughs> can you turn it down or you know this kind of way. I was, I was very much, uh, and every day I, I would have a different experience with you know there was a gentleman. I remember one day he came up and his wife had been diagnosed with cancer and she didn't have long to live and they he asked me to play a certain song and they danced in front of me and it was yeah just really moving experiences like so yeah now I have bus that was my last day of busking actually was after I got kicked out low I went busking the next day and uh, that was it I haven't bus since but wow. yeah I had always you, you were in Galway anyway for well you were you were beside the shop street anyway so uh, after yeah. the night before being in low and I suppose <laughs> the good thing about yeah. uh, the other good thing is there's no late nights when it comes to the busking <laughs> you're home yeah. early <laughs> I know, yeah. You can come and go. Do you know if you've had enough, just unplug it off you go. Just that kind of way. But I, I would say for anybody who it was probably the best thing I ever did was if for anybody who's who'd like to sing and doesn't have confidence or you know is a little unsure, just do that. It's the best experience ever. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's brilliant. No, because I mean, look, before the interview, I would have just had a quick Google search just to see was there anything that I didn't know or that I wanted to add to kind of questions to ask you. But like that there is is you know that's the real stuff I want. You know that that just shows you know there is a bit of work involved and you do have to kind of put yourself out there and and you have to take risks like it's you especially coming into the music scene I mean some people would say are you crazy sure what are you at um you know there's no money in it and but that's people who's not who doesn't have the grow for it and who doesn't who doesn't understand it you have to take them risks I think uh, for sure I think you know you can whatever you focus on grows for me I'm you know if, and if I focus on you're not going to make it you know don't even bother then you know that's what will grow in my mind but if you're like why not you know and, and what is it you're looking for as well does that kind of enter in my case I'm not looking to be the next big you know Loretta Lane or you know that kind of I'm just looking to, to sing my music and enjoy it and bring a little bit of joy to some people and if, if that can if I can get that from what I can do musically then, then I'm a winner you know that kind of stuff absolutely um no you're dead right and I suppose you you brought a bit of joy there at Christmas anyway you had you brought out a Christmas single oh yeah oh um just there before Christmas didn't you bring out a a couple of years ago now brought the the duet is it which duet you tell me are you on a (laughs) <laughs> oh so I, I candlelight and wine is that the one you're uh, that was out in november there i done the duet with shane moore yeah okay yeah <laughs> and well, a couple of years i brought it out i brought out a duet a couple of years ago an actual christmas song with uh, john malai that was like three years ago a duet and then this time i brought uh yeah we done we done we were wondering is it a, is it a bad time to bring it out but um that's gash now you said a christmas that's why song. i was saying i was thinking of the time of year because it was november december wasn't it yeah 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 no it wasn't it wasn't uh it wasn't a bad idea at all it went very well actually it did go well it was um and it's a good old song um and sometimes i bring this song out 
for uh, because I love it, and then other times I have to bring this song out because I think that the, the people it would be something that the people would like. Do you know what I mean? So I just try and get the balance. But Candlelight Mine is a great uh, old classic. I'd always remember Daddy singing it in, in the bands years ago, or Daddy playing the drums to it. And Shane just said to me, we were in Lanzarote, um, and he just said to me, "This is a great song. Um, this would do well if we if we record it." And I was like, "Jesus, let's do it!" <laughs> and it did. It's done well. Yeah, that's just things. It was probably nice to have that project work on as well you know because obviously things have been quiet so it was nice to to have that to focus on and do a video and 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 do the tracks and all that oh i know yeah the video was some crack now in the g hotel um and but yeah i'm back i'm actually i went back into the studio i was recording because there's a great campaign at the moment reach out campaign that trudy and billy um, have found it and um I'm involved in that that single and that'll be out soon as well. And I was back in the studio for that and I decided then to, I was like, just start recording a song that I love for years. So I started recording that as well. So I'm addicted to the studio. I love it. <laughs> uh, uh, the Reach Out Project was another thing I was going to ask you all about. Um, it, it's a brilliant thing that they're doing. And I can see on Facebook, people are putting up how they got calls from such an artist and it's just it's so lovely it's bringing lovely joy and am I right in saying there's a single coming out as part of that yeah yeah and there is you, so you were Jonathan Owens was isn't it that's doing the yeah Jonathan it? I believe is is producing it but I know that a lot of studios across the country had doubt in letting the singers um go into their studio to record it because of obviously the distance that were allowed travel and stuff so I was down with Barry uh Barry come by and in Pertumna and uh I know Wayne Rose and um other and ended MC lots of lots of, and um Brian up in Letterkenny they've all they've all had doubt in, in uh, remote recording and then yeah it's a great song it's lovely and there's loads of loads of us taking part in it so it's and it's lovely because we'll all be taking part in it but we've all been a part in you know that kind of way so the whole yeah, no, concept it is, of it is. It's, yeah, it's a lovely idea. So you went to record your part and then you said, all right, I'll record another song. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's one that's always given me goosebumps. You know, that kind of a song I'm like, just, I'm just going to do it. I'm doing it. So it's pure madness, you know, like it's it, the recording studio is addictive. <laughs> do you when you're going to bring that out or is it? Is it yeah, I'll bring I'll bring I'll bring it out. It'll be a couple of a couple of months probably again. It's finished now because I only literally put down that you know there's a few different bits to record in the song. Um and so I'll be called back in then to put down the final vocals and a few bits like that. But it'll it'll be it's it's in it's in the oven. Good. Well that's good. So we can look forward to that coming out anyway. Um because it's little things like that um that bring you know a bit of joy on Facebook and seeing these new songs coming out. I think more so than ever, because I suppose before COVID. You know there were songs here there and everywhere and sure you, you you listen to them and but i feel now people are passing more heat to them really because they have mm. the time to listen to them and the time to 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 look into it and watch the video well i know i am anyway so um, yeah i think um, you're right sandra and I, I know for me i would have been always looking for that good belter of a jive you know for the dance floor it's all about you know like and i know all made in the garage would have been you know that that went down really well for a good jive or you go you're gone but now at the moment, because there is no driving taking place, it's a good opportunity for the artist to, to record something maybe that mightn't have been suitable for the dance, you know, dance scene because it, it is about radio play at the moment. And um, yeah, so this this one now isn't a big jive, <laughs> but it's a lovely song. Just anyway, from all the past jives. Yeah. Um, no, that's good. No, we definitely look forward to, to hearing that. And um, I know the first time I heard, I, I, I properly heard Made in the Garret was, with um because myself and yourself are both on spotlight tv and i know i used to play that on my show at the very very start this is going back probably two or three years ago probably when it first came out um and i always used to play that on my show but um yeah you have you also have a show on spotlight tv yeah i do country show time with sabrina it's seven o'clock on thursdays and repeat it at two o'clock on a monday and i can't remember or, or i can't remember, i can't believe i remember the the, the times and stuff um it, it's uh, yeah it's a great experience as well yeah I'm doing that a couple of years now yeah no more than yourself Sandra you're probably you're doing it a couple of years yeah two so. or three years I admire you yeah. for knowing your day and time off the top of your head because ah. <laughs> uh, before we came on recording Spreen asked me when my show was on and I couldn't <laughs> tell her uh, <laughs> so that's my homework Nothing. is to go find out when my show Beats and Country is on television um so yeah, I have to laugh at that. I just forget. But um, do you know when usually you're recording it at the moment, whereas I'm not. So mm. do you know you'd be so used to going, 
beats and country on oh, her you know you'd be used to rhyming off the the little spiel you give and i'm not saying yeah. it so that's my excuse okay okay <laughs> oh, that's that's grand don't worry but and you know what the the numbers the channel for the, the that changes slightly as well so that's what we're gonna get confused with it's 365 at the moment i know that so think of online banking 365 that's how I remember it. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to steal that tip off you now um yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, you've look, you've kept busy and I know you're doing a lot of lives on Facebook as well. Um, how do you find them? Do you find going live on Facebook hard or, or is it just great to get back singing or? Um, so the sound can be difficult. That's what throws me is the sound, you know, um, because it's different, obviously, to a live gig to, to, to get the sound through a phone. And, you know, you can never really get it to sound spectacular. Um, and I was quite ill there. In, well, not ill. I, I was in hospital in November. I had Quincy. So it really um, interfered with my vocals. And uh, I was quite nervous. Um, and I was told to stop talking, which is impossible for me. But um, so I hadn't done a live in a good long time, but I did do one out last Friday and uh, it was lovely. It was lovely to do it. Um, it's, it is, it's lovely because I love to sing, you know, I, I just come alive when I'm singing. I could be singing into, I know when I was in college, my nickname was Songbird. The, the ladies that did the cleaner the cleaning used to say, oh, here's Songbird, because I'll just be singing up the corridor, singing to myself and all. So I definitely enjoyed the singing aspect. And it's a nice way of connecting with people because you see the little comment boxes coming up on live and, um is it a live gig is it the same energy no it's not but it's certainly it's certainly nice it definitely is to be able to plug in there's a lot of work attached to it you know what it is it's the you have to have a phone to see the comments you have to have another camera set up for the and and then you have to have the sound right and of course the last live i did my computer decided to just crash and i couldn't see the comments so if you can get all that right it's a great experience yeah it is work and I suppose people would really know that some people might know that you know unless they were involved in kind of um singing or sound or presenting or, or uh, performing of any sort so there is yeah you need to have all your everything lined up ready to go and even at that it could cut out you just don't know oh always as I like I never get nervous about singing in front of big crowds it doesn't matter who's there I don't get nervous but I, I do get nervous about sound I'm useless <laughs> I'm not very good at it like you know so once that's sorted I, I, I don't mind the, the logistics behind it you know yourself Sandra there's a bit of there is a bit of work involved in it like, yeah yeah and I know even I wouldn't be the most tech savvy because I suppose um, I suppose singers would probably be a bit more tech savvy because they'd have all their gear. Um, but I know here with my podcast, I wouldn't be the most tech savvy. And the, that's that's the thing I get nervous at. Like I'll stand up and present no problem or I'll get up yeah. and dance. But it's it's what gets me the most nervous is making sure I have everything ready and set up and the sound. And that's what gets, yeah, same. It's Absolutely. Because yeah, there's sugar totally. then, especially when, uh, you know, I have to get this recorded and it has to, if it isn't recorded, then the fun starts and we have to yeah. again. touch wood. I haven't had to do any interviews again. Thank God. Yeah. But uh, no, it's the sound part um, is the hard thing to do. But anyway, look, we're not complaining. At least the lives are keeping people, you know, um, they're letting people see. And I mean, you're, you're still promoting yourself in that sense, because obviously, as, we, as I said earlier, the, the whole self-promotion thing has gone slightly. You know, we're limited to Facebook, Instagram. Yeah maybe the radio bit of the telly and that's kind of it you know the live gigs um have you yeah. found i suppose have you found it being i know everyone is finding obviously lockdown and everything hard but you know mentally or or just has it affected you uh, do you do you feel like you're you're kind of trotting along nicely and you've your bits that are keeping you going or is it is it really getting a bit hard now or, or how how are you feeling about the whole thing um Okay, so for the first lockdown, I was finishing my master's, so I didn't even know there was a lockdown. Do you know, I was I was totally obsessed writing my thesis, and that oh my god, Jesus, never again. Um, so that was fine, and the second one uh, was okay. It was fine. Um, probably this one seems to have affected an awful lot more people that I've spoke to. Um, but to be honest, I suppose I am like I'm, I'm applying for this curating position now for an art exhibition that will be months a good few months work and you know I'm doing the interviews for that and business proposals and all it's taken a good bit of time and I am like it's funny I was only talking to Olivia the other day Olivia Douglas would be a very good friend of mine and we speak most days and she just said I've never I don't know anyone has been as busy for lockdown as you do you know I always seem to be doing something do you know that kind of way um but I have enjoyed I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say I've enjoyed the time where 
I can leave my pajamas on if I need to. I can flick on Netflix in the evening and watch something with my daughter. And I probably didn't realize at the time how quickly I was going and how fast I was moving. You know, I could be in Cork one night, I could be in Donegal the next. Uh, you know, I was I was like a road runner inside in the car, packing up the gear. And I did all that on my own. You know, I, I bring in the PA, I'd set it up, I drive home on my own at four or five in the morning. And looking back now, I'm kind of like, Jesus, how did you do it? So I'm finding now that um, I've definitely enjoyed the downtime. I don't have low the downtime but I certainly have more downtime than I did have um uh, there is days where I'm like oh my god and what frightens me is the days where I'm actually liking the isolation part and it's almost like you can become institutionalized in your own home or you don't even when the lockdown does stop the thoughts are going out again you know then that's a big one and for me Jesus the fitness thing is going out the window so <laughs> all the women were like we want to lose weight before we, we go back out for lockdown again so <laughs> so there's a few different aspects look it is what it is I'm, I'm a firm believer and the universe shows me I don't show the universe I have to, I have to go with the flow there is a lockdown happening uh, the doctors and nurses are fighting hard for us all you know so they just ask us to stay at home it's not too much to ask but um, yeah that's a long winded answer there now Sandra I don't know if I covered what you actually asked me there and you know what everything you said kind of sounds like me as well I've, I've enjoyed you know I've enjoyed it all and like that realized jesus the hours i was doing or the racing and the running when you're doing it you don't pass any heat that's just the norm but it's when you take a step back and think what was i doing yeah like like that i would have been on the road as well and maybe not court to donegal but uh i would have been driving five six hours a day and 14 hour days dancing like and gee looking back now i don't know what, what will we be like when it gets back to that and late nights we won't be able for the late nights at all when it no. gets back to normal <laughs> In bed at 10, I'd be like literally looking forward to going to bed early. Olivia is the same. We're like, well, how, how, that's when we just be going on stage, you know? So I, I don't know. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's um, another thing that I touched on in one or two other episodes was, um, I suppose, country music singers who were full time in the scene have had to go and get jobs or have had to look for work, work elsewhere. But you, you already seem to have so much going on in the background, which is great um i suppose and it's it's nice to know that you have other options available for the time being or you've you know you've bits going on that's not just based around the country scene uh yeah i suppose i would have like um the art it's funny because um yeah i do i've i've a lot of uh i've a lot of art experience in theory but i get a little insecure about it it's funny you know um you know in regards to singing no problem but then when i'm doing an interview for my art i'm gonna like i become a little insecure which is is not the truth i actually have a master's in textiles you know i'm qualified but um i can become a little um nervous about it so this position now that i am hoping to get i am there's a part of me going oh god do i get it but in theory i'm actually um i'm capable like in that kind of way and i have been making um making bits here in the house uh, you know some cards and different textile work and um i was making masks when the lockdown started oh my god nightmare i'll never make a mask again <laughs> people because i would be quite crafty myself i actually have my own little handmade craft business which has also been keeping me busy um oh and excellent I, and i know from fellow craft and friends everyone's like no i'm never making masks again <laughs> Oh my God. And they were, they were just literally, I was, they were, they were so, I'm, I'm dyslexic and there's a certain part of my brain definitely doesn't understand the, you know, turn something inside out, go in three centimeters, come back out, like it blows my mind. No. And then it was gone to the stage where when people were older than them, I was like, oh no, instead of going, oh, this is great. So then I just said, no, it's time to stop. And I wasn't very good at them. <laughs> I'm sorry for anyone who bought the masks. <laughs> anyway, there you go. So I much more enjoy the, the, the little cards I make stuff like that. I do enjoy them. Styles and, and fabrics and that that you'd be working with. Yeah, I did. I did fashion design for two years and uh, and I thought that's what I wanted to get into that area, but I found it quite bitchy and quite catty and it was all about, you know, the next big uh, catwalk and, and I wasn't into that. So I really got into the socially engaged side of it, which is um, like I have to have a bit of emotion in what I'm working with. So I did a huge project on um, on alcoholism in Ireland, alcoholism um, awareness, you know, um, that's how my husband would have passed away. So I'm very passionate about uh, um you know just creating awareness for, for teenagers i think you know they're so young and they're going out and drinking bottles of vodka and they actually don't know the dangers and um, so i've gone into it, it's a huge i knitted with crutches 
hospital sheets, 2,000 stitches to represent 2,000 uh, hospital beds every night used in Ireland for A&E um, with alcohol related issues. So, and a big uh, fetal position with chicken wire, you know, just to show the vulnerability of the alcoholic and the stigma attached to it. Anyway, I'm very passionate about that. Wow. But I traveled a lot with that project and that would be something that really, I can really connect with and I, I love, you know, and then I actually did a project um, for my master's on the musical, the country scene and, and the music and, and how it just literally overnight lost its, you know, it just it just collapsed and uh, the vulnerability of all the singers. And I got I got to get Mary Coughlin's her stage coat. It's beautiful. I got goosebumps when I opened the bag. I got Nathan's jacket and I wired them, Nathan Carter and Mike Denver sent me on a suit and I wired all these um and I put the microphones in front of them just to show the vacancy, you know, that the suit is there, but there's nobody in it, you know, so, and that's another project that I have to move further with as well. Um, applied to the Arts Council there to try and get funding for, because that's something that was, and Johnny Carroll's trumpet and his shoes and um, he had, um, he had his pages in the bag, in his little suitcase. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Johnny, the way he, he takes care of his trumpet. You know, he's had it, he's 65 years on the road and the papers inside the notes for 65 years and it's the first time where he's ever used them. And Philomena Begley spoke of her own, like, so I interviewed, yeah. So that, that's the kind of stuff now that just might, blows my mind, that kind of work, like, you know, I love that. So it's more so the socially engaged aspect um, than, than just making something, you know, that kind of don't connect with, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm in awe. That is absolutely amazing because, like, look, I would consider myself to be very involved in the country music scene. And even though I didn't know you personally, you know, you, you pick things up on Facebook or you know what's going on with the singers, whatever. But that is something there that, well, I mean, you you might know, but most of your fans might know any of that, that about you that you've just told us or would they? I don't know. No, I suppose I don't really share so much the art side um, as the music side. But uh, well, I, I do sometimes and I find it's funny because I might stick up something about my art and I don't really get a reaction. So, And one time I Russell Brand actually um, put up about my uh, artwork on his page. I, I got up one morning and I was tagged by Russell Brand and I was like, what the hell is this? Because I spoke to him. I'd gone to one of his shows and, you know, he's in recovery for addiction as well. And he... Um, he endorsed it yeah so that was kind of a, because it, it is quite big and quite potent and it's very powerful um so it is something when things get back to normal again i like to travel to more schools with that kind of thing so yeah it's something that i'm very passionate about you know the way sometimes you can do something and uh, you enjoy it but then you can do something and you're really moved by it you know i, I have to have some kind of a soul movement for, just for me as well so maybe people don't know that about me yeah Oh, no. that's I'm I well I suppose because I've a grow for crafty stuff anyway. Number yes. one, I love that side of it, but that's amazing. And especially as you, was it a project? The project that you done was just last year, was it? With where you had the suits and the yeah, uh, literally, yeah. yeah, just lockdown there. And I didn't share it. Um, I have um, it, it had to be um photographed obviously because of the safety you know we couldn't have a physical exhibition but it's something I, I still got to keep a lot of the uh, clothing poor old Nathan I don't even <laughs> I didn't send his jacket back yet and <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll sell it on eBay but um and the suits and all they're very they're quite difficult to wire and and to create a form you know you have to have them you know yourself uh, Sandra probably just to suspend something is quite um it's quite difficult to make it look like there's somebody inside it. So it took it took hours to, to do them. But um, this project that I've um, applied for now, I'll be in, incorporating because it's called the Magical Musical Garden. I'll be incorporating their, their clothes into it hopefully as well, yeah. That's brilliant because I suppose you, you obviously, it wasn't just about throwing the suits onto a bit of chicken wire. There was a lot more thought put into it <laughs> and it probably made you realise more about, think more about the scene I, and the reason I'm saying that is because I actually I done Irish music and dance in college god six seven eight years ago and my thesis was on country music and oh, wow. a part of it was just kind of like oh I love country music so I'll do it on that but god when you get in when I got into it and started actually thinking about it 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 just I can't even I don't even know what I'm trying to say exactly but when you start just delving into the country music scene and thinking about it more than than what you see on the outside it can it's it's amazing to think of how big it is here in Ireland and and like uh, that exhibition sounds amazing oh I would love to see photos of that it's oh just, well, it's 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 and do you know what it makes me think of the way you were describing it I was in Nashville a few years ago and in the um the, the main museum what is the museum of country music 
they have mm. all the artist's clothes and that's what I'm that's what it made me think of of yours um a little bit have you yeah. have you been to, were you in Nashville you do you know that? what I wasn't in Nashville and I lived in America for years I'm embarrassed to say that I wasn't but it is in the cards it was actually in the cards for this year so obviously it's not gonna happen this year but it's it's one it's on my um to-do list now in the next couple of years for sure but I also have there's a lot more to do for that project Sandra I, I only because of the time frame and I had only a couple of months uh to submit it I have a lot more to do in, in that project like for definite so I, I look forward to expanding it and I will share it eventually but I, do you know what I'll do I'll send you the, the pdf of, of what I have anyway today so you can have a look at it if you want oh no it just sounds i suppose i'd be a bit of a geek in that way i'd love to learn more about that kind of side of things and i know i've all my country music books here and i'd be very much into the that side of it you know obviously the dancing yeah. scene and the music part of it is great fun but when you actually look into it further and look at studies or like that a project on it i think that's really interesting yeah, and, and how sad it is really. How like that you can it screams out vulnerability on 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 both sides to the singers who this was their life. Like, you know, Nathan would you know do hundreds of concerts a day and now he's not. And you know, that the that the, the people that you know that would go to his shows would miss that, but also Nathan would miss it or Mary Coughlin, you know, they all they all give a quote how their lives have changed. And I think Johnny Carroll's is probably the most potent. I was like, wow. Um, and Philomena, you know, she just said she will she will go out and sing to the cows now. You know, she she just doesn't know because that's all their lives. Like I'm only a couple of years doing it, you know. So for, for people who've been all their lives have showed up on the stage and you know to become who they are, part of who they are. Um, and I think it's important that a lot of people would have to have had a, done a bit of self discovery uh, in order to to survive this collapse of what's happened. You know, because if you only are what you bring to the stage, then you're going to be lost right now. Like, anyway, I'm sounding like Dr. Phil. I'll shut up. <laughs> With him, we're kind of saying is, as I've said, what I want this podcast to be. You know, I don't want it to be, when's your next song out? And tell us about your <laughs> album and tell us about your gig next week. Do you know, this is what I've wanted is to find out more about the singers themselves and about you as a person and I've definitely got that today I'm delighted <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah you have that's good to have the old chat in the natter. it's not that I'm secretive or anything about it it's just I suppose I don't really get you know I don't really it's not something I'd chat about on on the country music side yeah but definitely a, a part part of me yeah well I know geez you've great support on Facebook anyway even you know I would have quickly gone into your Facebook page on Instagram just to check was there anything new Stop I needed coming to out know? Then. <laughs> yeah I know it's been awful just to check was oh, there anything new I needed but even like scrolling down through the news feed and geez Anne Cannon had a great post up about you there yesterday and praising you and it's lovely like you know it's it's lovely to see that and the comments and that kind of thing ah poor Anne you know what she's mighty she's great support um for the country music singers and even because we've all you know not at you know she'll she'll share loads and she loves it and it keeps her alive and you know and she's just a representation of so many other people who've had it you know ripped from their lives so but she's she's kept it going she's um share stuff and you know she's obviously missing the, the physical side of it as well I know that was like that's very sweet for her I know I was more to I was like Dan what are you doing right that off <laughs> but she's very good you know so uh, it's nice to it's nice to read something like that. I kind of find it uncomfortable, but anyways. <laughs> For those that are kind of helping with keeping the music scene going, you know, yeah. like by, by, as you said, sharing stuff. She's mighty for sharing everything mm. and telling everyone about what lives are on. And I mean, you need, you need that as well. Like, cause as, yeah. as singers, you know, you can be sharing your bits and throwing up your lives and all that kind of thing. But it's people like Anne that would, you know, keep promoting me and like, no, it's brilliant. And as you said, it keeps her going as well. She's very good. Yeah, she's mighty and does the yeah, she's mighty. And it it is nice, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's funny because we don't really know, like if you know, if we're being hundred percent honest, none of us know how this is gonna come back or what way it's gonna come back or if it's gonna come back or if dance halls will be full and sweaty and divers flying everywhere and shirts having to be changed. You know, no none, you know, I, I can predict her, but we don't really know. So you know, it kind of is very much day by day living now. So well, you just have to keep plowing along and keep, you know, putting, you know, recording and doing little bits and see whatever unfolds. Like in a perfect world, I'd be hopeful that, you know, things will go back to normal. But I think it's going to take some time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, even concerts at the end of the year. I'm, I'm assuming that's how it'll start back is with concerts. And I'm kind of hoping for the end of the year. But if not, please, God, next year. I'm sure if not, sure you can keep making your masks. 
<laughs> I would not have the notion. I'd rather eat beans now. There'll be a big okay. influx of orders now after people listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be oh, cursing no, no. me then. You'll be saying, oh, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> I felt I was actually my daughter's uh, friend ordered some, you know, and I met them for and she sent them back. So they were crooked. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> she said one of them was crooked. I was like, oh my God, I was so embarrassed. I was like, that's it. I'm never making them again. Very bad. That was the end of that business venture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, Sabrina? I've had a ball talking to you. And um, I suppose a lot, of, I, as I said, I've never met you, but you know, it's been. It's been lovely to find out more about you. And I, look, you're so used to seeing people's faces on Facebook. So, do you know, in that sense, you feel like you know someone. But God, no, you've really you've really given us a bit more of an insight into your life. And, and do you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I've really enjoyed it. Ah, uh, thanks, Sandra. I've really enjoyed talking to you as well. You know, the way sometimes you can connect to someone and it feels like you know them a lot longer or something. Do you know, I feel that with you now. You're a lovely, a lovely lassie. <laughs> to hear your it. hair. Your hair is stunning. I'm my like, mother, I can't. For anybody who's just listening and can't see this, Sandra's rocked up like literally a supermodel, and I'm here with my no makeup. And I would like to give a shout out to my mother. She's a hairdresser, so thankfully I have been, uh, I've been uh, able to have the the hair done throughout lockdown. So the greys oh and my I had a chop last week. So thank you, Mammy, for uh, it all. Looks amazing, Sandra. It's like you could do it for Dallas soon out there or something. <laughs> but uh, no, thank you so much for um for being our guest for episode seven. We're 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 getting high up now with the count. Episode seven. And Excellent. for anyone that wants to find you on social media, you have your Facebook page and you have your Instagram page. Is there anything else we should be looking for? The YouTube. No, I don't even freaking log into Twitter. I'm shocking. No, Sabrina Fallon Music is is um the, the music page on Facebook. I know I have two of them, but that's the one I kind of post most stuff in, and then the Instagram, yeah, Sabrina Fallon Music, and there is a Sabrina Fallon Art one as well. <laughs> I have to do them different, and then um or Sabrina Fallon, Sabrina Textiles or something like that is the is the art one. But uh, yeah, on YouTube. I, I'm so bad on YouTube as well, but apparently if you subscribe to YouTube, it's a good idea. So you can subscribe if you want to my YouTube Off you channel. Go, go and subscribe to all of them. Follow and like and subscribe <laughs> and all that jazz. Um, and you'll have loads of followers then. You'll be sorted. Oh, you already have loads, I should say. Jesus, you've already got plenty. Uh, oh, but no, you're great on social media, absolutely. And you're always throwing up different pictures. And even, even if it's something as simple as, I'm out for a walk. You know, I think fans still connect with that, and uh, and it's it's still nice to keep you know th- putting stuff up, and you're still there. You still have a, a persona, and you still have a presence in the country music scene, even though the scene is slightly not existent yeah. at the moment. Yeah, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, just keep it, yeah, keep it real. As I say, I, I'm not, I wouldn't do fake anyway. I'm not really able to be anyone else on myself. So just if I'm out for a walk, I'm out. I'll show it up. Like, no, yeah. I love to go out for a walk now because you're making me feel feel guilty because you were saying you were going for a walk today, so I better go for one. Oh, only because I have to. It's gone like none of my. I put on a glittery dress the night for the live and I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> so, oh my god! I just wanted to do the camera from my head up, so I was like, just you know what's me to start walking again. But you know what I find great um, is the music. Listening to the music when you're walking, like I can't walk unless I have music with me. So you just go into your own little world, and before you know it, you've five k done and you're back home and. Easy, easy way then. My own, I don't listen to my own podcast, but the other podcasts, that's what I find does the okay. job for me. So, um, yeah, be it music. And if anyone's out for a walk right now and listening to us, well, fair play to you. Keep going. Throw on another kilometre there. <laughs> is this going out live, is it? No, it's not live, but when they're listening back to okay. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be, oh, geez. I'd, yeah. Geez. All right. I must, uh, I'll definitely make sure and listen to this back yeah you can listen back. to this when you're out for your walk <laughs> i will i'll be cringing going did you say that sabrina is it that idea to an interview after two coffees <laughs> anyways have mine so that's what i'm going to go and do now is have my coffee but sabrina thank you so so much for agreeing no to come on because i was sending messages and and especially when i didn't when i didn't know you i didn't know if, if it would be a good or a bad answer coming back but thank god you, you accepted the invite and uh, here uh, we are no bother at all and thanks yourself Sandra thanks so much for having the chat and everything and I appreciate the support and um we'll meet you along the country scene please God now 
Please, God, sure, I'm only up the road here in Mayo anyway, so please, God, we will along the road. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the Country Chats podcast, and thank you to Sabrina Fallon, and we will talk to you all soon.